We want to go ahead and take an outlook, a forecast into the future of the multifamily industry for 2025. It's been a heck of a 2024, a lot of uncertainties, some good, some bad going into next year. So we want to, if you will, set the table for you in regards to what happened this year as we look into what we expect to happen into 2025 so you can have the best real estate year that you've ever had. Hey everyone, Hervé Francois here, your favorite acquisition manager at DeRosa Group. Starting for at the beginning of this year, 2024, right? In 2024, approximately 575,000 new multifamily units were added to the United States portfolio with the top five markets, Dallas, Phoenix, Austin, New York, and Denver accounting for close to 30% of that supply. And why did that happen? Because those markets, they were undersupplied leading up to 2024, where there was a lot of demand because those markets have faced a lot of job growth. And behind the job growth, there was not enough supply of units. So developers went ahead and fed the majority of the supply for 2024 into those five markets, again, representing um, over 30% of all 575,000 units. Um, what that, that resulted into, however, that resulted in the rent decline that took place in the Sunbelt market. The rapid rise of supply in these units caused rents to decline in any one of those markets, anywhere between four to eight percent, particularly in a city like Austin, Texas, that does not have the biggest slate of inventory, let's say like Dallas or New York, because they don't have a huge inventory to begin with, they saw rent declining by about eight to nine percent in 2024. Now, where did we see the opposite looking forward was in the Midwest. We saw a lot of rents increase in the Midwest this year. Now, why was that the fact? That was more partially due, largely due, because the majority of the supply went to the Sunbelt markets, not the Midwest markets. So the Midwest markets did not see a lot of pressure on rent declines like the Sunbelt markets did. Of the top 13 markets with the highest rent growth just in the third quarter of this year, nine of them were in the Midwest. None of them were in the Sunbelt. We're talking about cities like Cleveland, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Madison, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and so on and so forth. So now if you turn the page, turn the chapter as we go into 2025, what are our, our expectations here at Gorilla? Our expectations is that many of the multifamily markets that had experienced a lot of growth in supply this year and consequently negative rent growth, again, we're talking about markets predominantly in the Sun Belt, they are expected to bounce back in 2025. We're not going to see a huge bounce back, but we're going to see moderation to some nice growth in rents in those Sunbelt markets this year. Again, accompanied still by very strong job growth that's taken place in those markets. The main reason, again, because the supply of new units into the Sunbelt markets, that is projected to decline in versus the amount of supply of units that occurred in 2024. And you should start to see supply begin to abate, let's say the second quarter of 2025 in those Sunbelt markets. Now, as you see the supply in the Sunbelt markets start to decline in 2025, versus 2024, you're going to see occupancy rates start to stabilize in those markets as well. We saw occupancy decline anywhere between down to the mid 80s from the mid 90s last year because of all the supply of new units that hit the Sunbelt markets. We're expecting occupancy to climb back up to 90% and above in those same Sunbelt markets. Now, we know one of the biggest trends that had been uh, uh, benefiting a lot of Sunbelt markets was population migration. Over here in the East Coast, obviously people leaving states like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, moving down to states like Georgia and Florida and out on the West Coast, people leaving states like California and Oregon and moving down to Arizona and Texas. Now, an interesting observation that we've picked up on is that even though, again, the supply of units into the Sunbelt markets for 2025 is going to start to slow down. The strong rent growth that should accompany with the decline in supplies into units, that strong rent growth, that's going to be tempered a little bit. And why that's going to be tempered, because you're going to see migration into some of those Sunbelt states start to slow down. 
the rate of growth slowdown. It's not going to go to the negative. It's not going to turn into the red, but the rate of growth is going to slow down because now um, some of those markets are beginning to see higher cost of living beginning to take place, right? So it's going to be an affordability factor where perhaps in 2025, you wouldn't see seven to eight percent rent growth in those Sunbelt cities. Now we're talking about something closer to three to four percent. Migration is still strong, however, in cities such as Charlotte, North Carolina, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and Nashville, Tennessee. But where migration has been moderating has been in some belt markets like Atlanta, Georgia, Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Houston, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Austin, Texas, as we mentioned before. Also Jacksonville and Orlando, Florida, and Tampa, Florida as well. That's where migration has been moderating because the cost of living in those cities have been picking up a little bit. The markets that we expect to have the strongest rent growth in 2025, when you look at it from a geographic basis here in the United States, the Southwest should have the strongest rent growth next year at about 3.4%. The Northeast at about 3.3%, Midwest at 3%, South Atlantic at about 2.9%. The West comes in at the lowest at about 2.2% rent growth for 2025. So overall, that puts rent growth in the United States for 2025 at 3.1%. Let's not forget we are right now in a declining interest rate market. However, there's obviously going there. There's a change here in the administration starting in January of 2025. We'll see exactly what direction interest rates are going to head based on some of the policy directions that the new administration is talking about and things like that. But if we go ahead and are going to continue maintaining a a low interest rate or a declining interest rate environment, that should yield a return uh, to normal uh, for the capital market. So overall, folks, that wraps it up. Again, expecting some nice rent growth in some of these markets in 2025, particularly in the Sunbelt markets, as we see supply being tempered going into those markets versus what we saw this year, 2024. But again, that strong rent growth being tempered because of the living in some of those Sunbelt markets a little bit on on, on the higher side. So that's going to cause rent growth to, to temper a little bit. From here, folks, I'd strongly recommend if you're looking to take your real estate business to the next level in 2025, please start by going to derosagroup.com slash tools. Go ahead and download my free, you heard it, free market analysis tool. That's going to help you start to figure out what makes an attractive market to invest in in regards to where you can find information on a market, things such as population growth, job growth, income diversification, median rents, and so on and so forth. Get started. We're with you, and I wish you a lot of luck in your real estate journey. Take care.